So hi everyone and welcome to today's Digital Boost webinar, making your social media work harder for your business. So social media has become an integral part of the marketing mix for lots and lots of companies, both big and small. And um, one interesting fact that I read the other day was that's because almost 85% of the UK's population are active social media users. And these users often interact with businesses, with 90% of Instagram users following a business. And um, a large percentage, I think it was over 50% of Facebook users interacting with a Facebook business page at least once a month, which is great. So um, that's why today we're going to be talking about social media and we're joined by two social media experts who can share some of their expertise to help you get the most from your social platforms. So just a little bit of general housekeeping before we begin. Um, we will be recording the session and a link will be sent out and shared with you all afterwards. Um, everyone who be, has been placed on mute just to avoid any background noise. Um, if you do have any questions, please add them into the chat and we'll tackle these if we can. And then if not, if we don't have time to cover all of the questions in the webinar, we'll follow up with um, any suitable answers or supporting content afterwards and try and circulate that round. So just to introduce ourselves, I'm Sarah Johnson and I'm co-founder of Interleap and we're a data-led marketing agency and I've been working in digital marketing for over 17 years now, back when brands were just starting to work out as like, hmm, could there be an opportunity for us on social and even before Facebook didn't run ads, which is uh, crazy to think about now. And um, I'm joined today by our experts, Gary Ennis and Jack Allen, and I'll let them introduce themselves to you all. So Gary, do you want to go first? Sure, thank you very much, uh, Sarah. I'm Gary, Gary Ennis. Uh, I run a company called NS Design. Uh, I hope uh, a number of the attendees maybe on today's session will recognise my smiley face. I do a lot of delivery for Digital Boost, um, helping on topics such as all of social platforms, web, um, search engine, etc. cetera. Um, we've been going for nearly 35 years. Um, Sorry, I said 35 years, I've just added a decade, 25 years, I don't know where that came from. Um, I've just, I, my grey hair might suggest another 10 years, but that's another matter. Um, and uh, in short, we help businesses with all sorts of things digital, especially social media. Over to Jack. Hi there, uh, my name is Jack, uh, and I'm the founder of The Day Agency. Um, we have not been going 25 years, we've been going for about three or four years. Um, and essentially what The Day Agency is, is we are a student-driven media agency. Um, so we connect local students um, with independent businesses and brands in their cities and um, to help them with content creation and social media uh, management. Um, today we've got offices um, across the UK, Edinburgh, Manchester, Newcastle, um, with sub offices in Leeds and Liverpool and Glasgow um, and we also have two international offices as well um, so um, it's been a bit of a wild ride um, but I'm really looking forward to kind of chatting to everyone today. Excellent I know I'm really looking forward to today actually so um, yeah like we said you can pop your questions in now but I think the first thing we need to think about is um, with so many um, talk, so much talk of social media and everything just now we've seen like so many it's just of our customers and ourselves and businesses use social media. How important is social media still for today businesses in today's digital climate and what kind of benefits can it bring to small businesses? And um, Gary, do you want to take it first? Sure, no problem. And Jack, just jump in and, and, and uh, okay. any time. Um, for, for me, I think the biggest thing about social is uh, what it is and, and it's, it's a, a load of platforms which attract people, okay? People are on these things, and therefore businesses have an opportunity to engage back. I remember years ago I was at a, a, a business event, uh, and I can't remember the name of the speaker, which is dreadful. But they said what they were teasing the audience, and they said, "What one thing do you need in business?" And people were shouting out, "An idea, a product, a service." And the answer that, that was teased out was none of that. These, these all come once you've got a customer for whatever it is you're going to do. And uh, you know, Facebook's got three billion of them. Instagram's got one and a half. You know, TikTok's fast catching up behind them. So if if we as businesses need people to succeed in business, then social has all the people. Um, and we can use these platforms to talk to them, to engage with them, yes, to sell to them, albeit, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, with a bit of caution. You know, how do we do it? Do we just sound like a spammer? Or are we truly helping and supporting and, and talking with people, building trust, influencing them? 
Um, you know, nobody buys from companies they don't trust. And and what what social allows, especially small businesses, is to do is to build that level of trust. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd follow on from Gary in that, of course, um, you know, if you think about how um, people get the word out there, how businesses can kind of basically distribute their messages, then obviously, you know, much larger businesses, your kind of Pepsi's, Coca-Cola, those kind of business school case study businesses that you, you kind of, your, your mind rushes to, um, you know, they've got the budget to, um, you know, distribute their messages through any number of means. But for, you know, the vast majority of organisations, particularly the type of businesses that, um, like even ourselves, um, everyone on this call as well, um, you know, if you kind of really wanted to do an analysis of how you get your messages out there, then at this point in time, in this day and age, um, you know, how much and how much awareness you can get from kind of print media and those kind of things, that's drastically reduced. Um, and at the same time, social media is really kind of looking like one of the key, if not the, the major option um, for most businesses. Um, you know, I think I would somewhat um, nuance what I've just said with that, you know, even though social media is such a, a kind of major kind of opportunity, the, the situation has changed. Um, you know, we're not in 2007 anymore, um, where organic reach on social media, um, and by organic reach, I mean, you know, posting on an Instagram page or posting just on a Facebook page um, can, can identify your, your perfect customer, you can go a little bit viral, um, that situation has totally changed um, and, it, and it requires a lot more kind of a specific approach and um, there, there's so much more to kind of managing or being successful on social media um, and it's actually, um, I, I think, for, for all businesses there's opportunity in that but it's much, much more like kind of um, interesting time um, to kind of get involved and it requires a different approach. Yeah and with social media like can it can it support you know, kind of across different um, business goals like in terms of raising awareness or nurturing your customers like do you, is that something that you would factor into um, a strategy can it kind of support all of your like a few different business goals? Yeah, yeah can I, I very quickly yeah one of my one of my least favorite phrases is social media marketing Okay, and because that's often how social media is sold as, as you know, that's what it is. It's social media marketing. Um, and yes, marketing is part of, you know, the, the strategy as to how a small business can use social media to engage an audience. But the problem with going in with that word is that we immediately go into sales mode and promotional mode and marketing mode. And, and as you say, Sarah, social media is way more than that. It, it, it can be it can be marketing, it can be selling, it can be customer support, it can be you know treating your existing audience with VIP treatment and having them build better relationships with you. It can be reaching new customers. Um, it, it doesn't need to be, you know, be careful any business whose whose mindset is these are marketing tools. They are, but they're so much more. It's more of a conversation, isn't it? I mean, I think we saw during lockdown as well, social was where you went for the instant, are you opening? Can yeah. we get this? How are you operating now? So it isn't just about kind of pushing what you want to see. It's about seeing what your customer wants to hear as well. Have you found that as well, Jack? Yeah, I mean, I think what what I would, if, if Gary's least favourite phrase is social media, mar uh, digital marketing or social media marketing, mine is probably actually, um, that phrase strategy um i think that really kind of um particularly for small business owners and businesses that are just starting that is almost it's a, can be a bit of a distraction and, it, and it's kind of like you're looking for this uh one answer which is this strategy uh and, and unfortunately um or fortunately actually um you know that's not the case uh, you know if you want to put a positive spin on that um how i would kind of if i was starting a new business uh, you know, I would think about trying to basically explore and experiment with what works for you on social media. Um, you know, don't think of it as you need to, you know, get someone to tell you what the strategy is, because the likelihood is that they're not going to be able to. And when they do, or if they do, um, it's going to change in a couple of weeks anyway. Um, yeah. So the kind of thing that you need to do is think about, OK, well, what are the business results um, that you're looking for? Is that engagement? Is it distribution? Is it reach? Is it, is it kind of just brand awareness? Um, and then my favorite thing to do in the whole world is work backwards from there um, and you know what's the starting point for that and the only way to do that is to get out there try it uh, and, and adapt the the kind of way that you do that yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of because i know that um one thing that we often get asked as well is there's so many platforms now so that there's 
well, there's not so many, but you know what I mean? There, you have different choices of platforms. It's not just Facebook or just Twitter. Um, how can small businesses kind of determine which platform? Is there a one size fits all? Or how do you go about kind of determining which platform is the best fit for you or which platforms that you should use? So for me, and again, Jack, take that one first if you want. For me, it's about, um, well, you know, where, where it, flip, flip it. Don't ask which is the best platform for your business. Ask what are the best platforms for your target customers. And again, even using the word target customers is quite harsh, isn't it? Um, you know, ideal customers. Who who do you believe would make the perfect customer for you, your product, your service, and where are they hanging about? You know, where are, are they? And again, we can get a little bit, you know, we can pigeonhole a little bit. We can be a little bit stereotypical. We can look at the, you know, the annual the annual uh, hoop suite and we are social results and say all right here's the demographic breakdown of this age prefers this platform and this gender prefers that platform and there's a wee bit of truth in all of that but ultimately as a business owner who who should have a strong understanding as to who your target customer is going to be you should then climb inside their mindset and, and, and again the question is where do they hang out are they facebook users are they instagram users are they more of the tiktok mold and, and and picking the platforms to suit them rather than picking the platforms to suit you now hopefully there's a bit of overlap but again if you're trying to engage customers where are the customers yeah so i think obviously that kind of the, the customer first approach is a, is a really good way to do it um I, I would suggest that you know particularly when you think about the instagram facebook kind of um those i guess you know most most businesses probably can find their audience on there at this point um, I would really think about kind of, you know, social media again, as I said at the start, it is your, your primary distribution method to get your messages out there. Um, now, if you don't feel comfortable putting your messages out on one of those platforms as the business owner or as your kind of marketing team, essentially, um, then, you know, there's, you're less likely to be successful. So think yeah. about what, what kind of platform, which of the features on each of those platforms particularly work with you. Um, we've had clients in the past who basically have just um, just used Instagram stories and that's been their key distribution platform um, and that worked. Again, yeah. there's no like one size fits all, um, but in amongst those kind of key platforms, if there's there are different kind of features or different things that, or different um, platforms that you prefer using, then, you know, make, take that into consideration. Yeah. I think Jack just... just... Had a question, eh? Oh, sorry. No, I was just very quickly just to follow on from, from what Jack said there, um, you know, and I'm sure Jack's the same. We, we hear a lot from business owners who who don't personally like social media um, and they say things like, you know, it's a necessary evil and I'm, we're on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook. We're purely doing it for business purposes. And, and we're always, I hope, quite honest with them and say the reality is you won't get as much from it as somebody who knows the platform, knows what it's like as a user, happy to be on on Facebook and knows the features of it on a personal level because if you're purely looking at it from a business angle then you forget what what the user's angle is um so yeah I, I I think there's a wee bit of you know part of the strategy might just be sticking to what you know what you're comfortable with hopefully your audience is there as well and just you know deliver a great service there and, and not trying to spread yourself too thinly on all of them we have had a question and um from one of our attendees at saying, I'm keen to know what kind of person hangs out on Clubhouse. Is that anything that you guys have uh, worked with yet? Um, I mean, my jokey answer would be an invisible person that doesn't exist. Um, but, <laughs> well, there's um, a few, there's a few of them, there's a few. few. Um, but, I mean, um, I've obviously had a wee sneak peek of the talking points with me. Um, but the, one of the, uh, I think we might, talk a wee bit about fads and um, social media fads. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think when it comes do you want me to spoil the, the upcoming bit? But basically we'll when, when it comes to we'll social media. For them. Yeah okay that's fine. We'll talk, we'll talk about it for them. But but for Clubhouse essentially I mean I think if you if you go on Clubhouse there was a, a, that big kind of rush to get on there. Yeah. Um you know I've accidentally clicked on it a couple of times in the last few weeks. Um, so I have been on there. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of gurus, coaches um, I think the audience that's on there has changed quite dramatically in the past few months um, and it's decreased in quality, I would suggest. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with any of that. And I know we will later on talk a little bit more about social fads and trends and all the rest of it. Clubhouse was hyped hugely over the last couple of years and through the pandemic and, and the way they did their sign up and invitation only and they, they kind of really hyped it. Uh, and they got a lot of people interested. And the reality is since it became more mainstream, since it opened its doors, since other platforms started pinching the, the, the same principles, you know, Clubhouse is now effectively Twitter spaces. Um, and, and Facebook is doing stuff with audio and so on um, but listen it's, it, it's not to be ruled out um, I know I, I attend a couple of club but this, I mean this says more about me than anything else but I attend a couple of regular clubhouse um, chats when I can from people that I know deliver real value on it and you're right as Jack says there may be a little bit more of the kind of consultant you know trainer give give a bit of business value kind of sell sell their services subtly in the background um, but it's just listen it's another tool in the box um, and if it works then great and if it works for you it fits Yep. Um, once you have selected your platform, because I know that um, we've had a couple of questions come in on it, and I know that it's it's the logical next step. Once you have kind of found a platform that one fits your audience, and two kind of fits what you want to see and how you want to um, form, what is the kind of best way to to make a presence and build your followers? Is there what kind of content should you be sharing? Is there um, kind of any top tips around that? Because that is um, quite a few of the questions that we've got coming in. Jack, you jump in first here because I, yeah, I keep sure. going first and cutting you off. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I, I think the first thing is that it obviously depends on the platform and it also depends on literally where that platform is at at the given time when you join on there. Um, so I guess let's divide social media um, and each of those platforms probably um, as a general rule into organic posting, which is posts that you just kind of upload and, and, and don't pay for and then paid posting and that's obviously as a, as, a, as a kind of name suggests the kind of more advertising things that you, posts and bits of content that you pay to distribute essentially to a wider audience um, so when it comes to that organic posting um, in terms of kind of a couple of things a couple of points to consider probably um, the first is really about the the substance of that that content that you're putting out what's the message you're delivering um, I, I would make sure you kind of assess what are the things that um will engage your audience firstly what are the things that are going to kind of trigger kind of thought processes or conversations with customers um what what are those you know in your business niche in your kind of product or service um what are those kind of conversations that will will kind of kick something off with your with your target audience and then secondly on the kind of substance of those posts um when it comes to kind of calls to action don't be afraid to ask um but also kind of um build that build that rapport with them through kind of more engaging content, but then also don't be afraid to ask to obviously sell or, you know, whatever your kind of um, key business kind of strategy or kind of aim is there. Uh, and then finally, just on the kind of um, what should you post on each platform, um, the thing I would really advise looking out for um, is any developments in the platform. Um, so for example, on Instagram right now, um, you'll see um, the new kind of Reels feature, which is essentially a rip off of TikTok. Um, but whenever one of these platforms release a new feature, um, they want people to use it. They're desperate for people to use it. They've plowed probably billions into like developing and releasing this brand new feature. Um, and users that do use that and businesses that do use those new features will be rewarded. So um, we've got clients at the moment that have been using Reels um, almost um, as one of the key parts of their kind of Instagram posting schedule. Um, and those bits of content are generally being distributed and reaching maybe five, six, seven, even 10 times as many people as your more standard Instagram posts. So think about kind of new features and how you can include them. Uh, we can probably come back to kind of paid in a minute, but Gary, I'll let you jump in there. Yeah, no, great advice. I would echo a lot of what you just said there, Jack. I think, you know, one of the words you used a couple of times, which every business needs to, you know, have at the top of their agenda is that word engagement. Um, as, as has already been discussed, the platforms have massively evolved over the years. Facebook used to give you, if you, if you used to have a, a thousand followers, Facebook used to give your next post a thousand reach. Whereas, whereas now it's all these pesky algorithms that are at play. And one of the biggest drivers of the algorithm is, is 
audience engagement. Do people actually engage with your content? And if they do, then you're going to see a better return from it. You're going to reach more people. You're going to attract more people. Um, and if you're just plowing out, kind of, again, if I go back to my standard business marketing, then is that engaging content or is that you being too self-promotional? And who's going to click like? Who's going to comment? Who's going to share that with their friends? Whereas if you're playing the game a little bit, and I'm not suggesting for a minute that all social content needs to be daft and silly and frivolous, but as we jokingly say, you know, where's the cat videos? Don't mean that literally. I mean that where's that lighter side of engaging fun? You know, social for so many people is a fun place. There are exceptions. Dare I say LinkedIn might be one of them, for example. Um, if you want to lose a few LinkedIn followers, upload a cat video and step back. This is not Facebook. Um, so again, play the game a little bit. Think about how to get the likes, the, the comments, you know, start some discussions. Easy strategies, you know, instead of tell, ask. You know, ask more questions rather than just telling people things. Bring them in, you know, bring them in as part of the discussion. And um, I just also just to go back to the original question, which was how do we grow followers, how do we grow our numbers, how do we establish more of a presence? I always like to remind any small business, don't forget the basics, you know, right scale it right. But and by that I mean, you know, you're busy trying to establish a, a Facebook following or a LinkedIn following or a TikTok following, and you've got a website which doesn't link to your Facebook. Because believe me, a lot of businesses don't even have things like that. You know, chances are Google sending you a lot more people looking for your product or service today than people are going to be stumbling across you on Facebook. So a link from your website to Facebook, a, a, a basic, a sim sim simple starting point. Um, and again, Jack m mentioned earlier on the difference between organic content and paid content. Just one thing to see on paid content, and we might talk more about it as we go. Small businesses shouldn't rule out paid strategies. Loads of them do. They go, oh, I've got no money. We're trying to cut the budget. You know, we've got. Whereas paid strategies can go a long, long way if you use them well. And one of the ways I like to see a startup business use paid, paid, is to is to pay to reach the followers that they don't yet have, which is getting harder and harder to do organically. So a little bit of paid, and you're not paying to reach the masses. You're not spamming people. You're not attracting the wrong. You're, you're using paid strategies to reach exactly the customer you want to find you quickly. And a bit of that might 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 be a lot quicker than trying to do it organically all day every day for the next six months. And in terms of paid, do you have? Are they paid to play now? Like, is there any point in running a social media strategy if you don't have any budget to put behind any sort of promotion? Would you say that that's an integral part of every? kind of, if you want to push your followers and get your content out there, do you have to pay? Yeah, I'm, my uh, answer to that would be yes. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's pay to play just to engage people. But I think particularly if your your business aim is to generate leads or to generate um, sales, then yeah, I think having a really good, well thought through kind of sales funnel or lead generation funnel uh, is ultimately um, the only way to really kind of succeed at scale uh, and generate kind of impactful and meaningful business results. However, um, you know, that organic piece at the top um, of that funnel, if you think of kind of how people find out about you, um, you know, if you think about um, the first step is really awareness and brand awareness, and then that funnel gradually narrows down to a conversion or sale or lead generation at the bottom. Um, I think that um, you can you kind of utilize paid less so at the top of the funnel, maybe, um, and use those organic features that I mentioned, maybe the things that are going to drive a bit more reach to kind of engage a broader customer base at the top. Uh, but ultimately, when it comes to you know that that final business result, um, so in our business, that's lead generation. Um, with a lot of our clients, that's kind of online sales um, or inquiries or things like that. Um, then I think a good quality paid strategy at the bottom of the funnel to finally convert people from engagers um, and you know community members or whatever you want to kind of call them um, to ultimately customers. That that's that is essential. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I would, I would just echo a lot of that. I think um, I think the, the the great irony is that, that a lot of small businesses, if they are going to entertain paid strategies, they see it as a last resort. They, they're doing it because they're frustrated at what Facebook is not giving them or because they're not getting the attention that they feel their organic content deserves. And so they're looking at the, the kind of paid as, as the kind of, right, this is the only way. It's the whole, the whole classic, you know, Facebook show you the post, show you the, show you the low numbers and then wind you up with a boost button alongside it, you know, and, and, yeah. and they, feel, they feel that, that that's the only... 
I, I, whereas if they looked at the, the the strategic, good, clever, you know, not frowning on it, looking at the opportunity from the paid strategies, there's a lot of development in there, especially as Jack says on the kind of on the business end of it all. You know, if you're looking to drive traffic, if you're looking to get more sales, if you're looking to get more inquiries and leads, and 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 it's not that social fun. Let's just chat and have a bit of a laugh and chit chat and banter and build that social relationship. Then the paid does go a long way to make that happen. So it's taking a tactical approach to your page and, and kind of using it wisely. We've had a couple of really good questions in actually, which I was going to move on to next because there's always a lot of questions once we, like around content. So there's like, is, I'm going to ask two parts. One, is there any kind of rules around how often you should post? Is it more posting the better or less posting in higher quality? And then we've had a few questions in about schedulers and Hootsuite. So I think if we cover how many, how what is there a, kind of a formula as to how often you should post or does that depend? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on this one because this is kind of a, another one of these like um, almost bugbears, I guess, you know, particularly when you, when you have a, an initial conversation with the business, this is obviously one of the questions that people want to ask. Yeah. And honestly, there, it, you know, I think people expect there to be a right answer and a wrong answer, yeah. but there's not. Um, this is really about what works for your business. Um, if, I mean, if people went on our business Instagram, we probably, there is no real consistent posting schedule. Um, you know, a lot of the paid activity that we do does a lot of the kind of legwork for us and that's always running in the background. Um, and our kind of organic reach and our organic posting is really surrounded around key business events, things that are going on in our company that, that you know, our followers and, and um you know, we'll, we think will drive our, our and build our community. And um, so, uh, you know, I think particularly um, social media agencies like ourselves, um, you know, you'll find packages that include, um, you know, a set number of posts or whatever. Um, and although that is something that, you know, can be beneficial, um, I wouldn't make that kind of your, a, a success pillar for you um, and for your business. Um, if it works for you, great. If, yeah. if it doesn't, then you know, change it. Um, pro if you the, feel the, like you're getting value from more posting, do it. And if you're not, then yeah. you don't have to. Yeah, the, the beauty is, Jag, isn't it? The the the, the data's there, right? So, so so you'll be able to work out, you know, is there any difference between posting once a week, twice a week, three times a week, based on data and reach and, and outcomes out the other end of it? And the problem is, uh, if, if businesses focus on meeting a target, uh, and, and of course, if you Google how many times should I post on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you'll find millions of different answers and contrasting answers, and, and, and there is no right or wrong. But the problem is, if you zone in on a number, you then tend to focus on the number as opposed to good content um you know so if you're if you're making i must post six, six things today on twitter and i'm only at four it means the two that you squeeze in by the end of the day are going to be rubbish okay because 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 you're desperate to meet this this number target as opposed to what is good content what would my audience engage with what might my audience want to see today how can i help them how can i support them how can i yes promote my business and you know raise awareness etc but you you focus you know i think i think Sarah, you 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 kind of said it yourself fairly on is it quantity or is it quality and i think we all know the answer to that one it's, it's always it's always quality it's always on the quality side um and, and if and if you post you know less of a higher quality you'll probably do better with the engagement with the algorithm with the audience engagement with their, their love for you as opposed to just hitting them with numbers and stuff and 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 you know th there is the risk that it backfires and they get a little bit sick of your low quality posts to start to ignore you and filter you out the feeds mm -hmm. and in terms of content schedulers because once you kind of do kind of get a little bit of a rhythm of what engages yeah. with your audience and what kind of posts you want to or what kind of things you want to post there and say you've got a few different platforms is there any scheduler that you would recommend that people would use or do you not use them um so we kind of always run little tests with schedulers and um generally what we found is that actually at this point most of the platforms have their own internal schedulers and the only real kind of standout one that doesn't is is tiktok um which again is kind of more a feature of the platform um but we, we've kind of compared a whole load of different schedulers from Buffer, Hootsuite, um, Sprout Social, Later. Um, and a lot of the schedulers occasionally we'd find would generate a little bit re less reach and engagement um, than, you know, 
publishing or scheduling internally using Facebook Business Suite or something like that. Um, so that again is one of these one of these things. It might work for you, it might not. Um, sometimes it's just a means to the end, um, yeah. and it's literally what you need to do to get your business up there and, and regular on social media. Um, but again, I don't think it's going to destroy your business. I don't think it's going to be the making of your business. So again, it's something to to find what works for you. Um, in our experience, schedulers maybe take a little bit of reach off of your posts. Um, but the free options that come with Facebook, um, so Facebook Business Suite, caveat that with there's been quite a lot of issues with Facebook Business Suite recently. Um, but th those options are very good. Um, and I would definitely advise kind of playing around with them first. If that's something you get value from, then maybe look at some of the other schedulers that are paid. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, if I'm if I'm allowed to, I'll play devil's advocate a little bit here and say I wonder if Jack sees a noticeable difference on some of these third-party schedulers because he has some significant follower counts on some of those platforms that you're involved in. Um, you know, if you're I get a silly example. If you're Coca-Cola scheduling content to millions, then a very tiny percentage lower reach is going to be big for small startup businesses is are they going to notice any neg negligible difference or not again most of them again through trial and error and playing with some of this stuff over the years you know to me it comes down to even if there was is the convenience of using the tool better for you to get on with doing good content and actually doing some of this stuff than worrying about you know a small extra two three percent lesser reach of something which is already small in the first place um Personally, again, a lot of small businesses. We, we named a load of tools there: Hootsuite, Sprout, Social, things like Buffer. Um, there are there are tools which are very cost effective, almost free. Some of them at some level, which which will allow good basic scheduling. Some of the bigger tools are way more than just schedulers. So Hootsuite does scheduling, but it's way more than a scheduler tool and you pay for the privilege you know keep in mind you know we mentioned platforms like Hootsuite we always need to remember you know the standard monthly fee for a UK business on Hootsuite is 75 quid a month which is a, not an insignificant amount of money for a small business to consider so you've got all of those tools you've got as, as Jack said you've got you know meta business suite for the internal Facebook and Instagram scheduling which yes has its has its challenges and its frustrations at the best of times but again it's there it can be used for free um, and, and to go back right back to the question should we schedule I think if it suits you, if it's convenient, if you know that you should be doing now this slightly contradicts, contradicts what I said earlier on about number of posts every week or every day. But if you know that tomorrow you should be active and should be saying something, but tomorrow your small team are all busy and can't say anything, then of course, take advantage of scheduling to say the right thing at the right time on the platform. Now, the one risk I warn anybody with regard to scheduling is, well, you scheduled it. And you're not actually there to deal with engagement, to deal with questions on the back of it, you know, to deal with any inquiries. Um, and so if you are scheduling content, I would encourage any small business to at least have some resource to be able to manage what they hope they're going to get back on the content, which is a little bit of dialogue. Because otherwise you put something out, people are inquiring, talking, asking, and you're silent. You've gone away because you, you were never there in the first place. You scheduled that content. That can present a bit of a risk for some small businesses. But on the whole, it's manageable. And again, take advantage if it helps. Okay. And that kind of leads us on to our next thing that we want to talk about is, inter is social, like we've said, like, and I know that, Jack, you've said you hate the word strategy, and I'm about to talk about it. Good. But um, <laughs> social is fast moving and it, it, is, it can be reactive. Is it still important to have a social strategy for your business? And um, um, what would that potentially involve? What would that look like? So. <laughs> I'll jump in here gladly. <laughs> Jack's already said I hate strategy. Don't ask me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I think companies should have a strategy, okay? But let's not get hung up on that word strategy. What does strategy mean? Okay, strategy, uh, in, in my opinion, at, at its basic, means you've thought about it. You've thought about. You're not just jumping in feet first and it's doing stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. There's a purpose. There's a reason. There's a hope. There's a hopeful intended uh, outcome. You, you know, you're you're not just going. Oh, I'll just jump onto TikTok today and see this run. There's a, there's a bit of planning and a bit of thinking. And 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 I agree. I think Jack was alluding to this earlier on. I think a lot of small startup businesses, the word strategy scares them because because strategies are something that big businesses do and they spend a lot of money on and they bring in consultants. They and they sound expensive, exactly. Whereas it's about thinking about why are you here, 
Who is your customer? How can you engage them? What are the right platforms to do that with? What, what's your resource to do it? Can you even do it? You know, this, this plan of yours, or is it kind of unachievable right from the off? And kind of never getting hung up on strategy. Strategy should be flexible. You know, there is no five year social media strategy. You know, there shouldn't be a one year social media strategy. There should be a what it's, what it's going to do for you right now in terms of what you're hoping to achieve and be willing to adapt and 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 be flexible and tweak that and change it you know as we've heard the algorithms change regularly the customer um behavior changes regularly it wasn't that long ago that that you know tiktok was purely you know mid 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 range teenagers Whereas now it's becoming very mainstream with lots of you know normal non-teenage people on there. Um, wasn't that long ago that Facebook used to give you all the reach? Now it gives you none. So if if our strategy is fixed, then we're getting it wrong in a week's time, let alone a, a year's time. But the strategy is just s s simple thinking about what you're trying to do and how you're going to make it happen. Yeah. Again, pretty much. I guess um, how I tend to think about it. I was speaking to a startup based in Edinburgh. Um, a few weeks ago, um, and they were kind of, I think they'd employed a, a big firm to do a kind of big kind of document and everything. And, and ultimately, you know, outsourcing that kind of thing and not being involved in that process means that you're going to be given a booklet that is or is not that relevant to your business. And um, so I, I would again sit down, what are the business goals, um, and then write five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ways that you can achieve that um, work backwards so if we want to be reaching people that are staying in or tourists in edinburgh for example um, what are 10 ways we can reach tourists in edinburgh and then use the platforms as part of that don't start from how do we do this on facebook or how do we do this on instagram yeah. make the platforms work for you based on your business goals um, and i think by starting from that way um, you know, we know that the platforms are going to be part of that because of what I said in the first answer that, you know, they're the, the main way of distribution. Um, but that can also tie in with offline things and other ways that can be a bit more creative. So, so think about three or four challenges your business has and come up with five or six different approaches to, to solve those problems. Um, and inevitably, the social media platforms will be part of them um, and they will help you solve those problems yeah good good advice could because often the, the the reality is a business that starts the strategy by saying right how are we using facebook uh, or, or how are we, uh, you know we start with the ta the tactics first rather than the tactics are there to serve meeting the objectives so what are the objectives uh, if any if any um, of the listeners uh, of the uh, the webinar today are keen on strategy okay one that i always recommend and it is a bit heavy it's not for everyone and uh, there's a chap called paul smith who's quite a well-known figure within chartered institute of of, of marketing etc and he has a strategy called sostac s-o-s-t-a-c and it's just a nice framework to work to um i can't take any credit for it it's, it's his it's i've used it many many times it's kind of a, it's great for kind of developing meteor strategy planning but for a lot of small businesses it's overkill um we we almost like to kind of really kind of almost oversimplify it we we have kind of what we call our three golden rules for again we don't ever say for strategy but i'll say that for today given the question and the rules are simply rule number one know your business okay now that that's as jack was saying what, what are you trying to achieve? What are you good at? Why are you special? What makes you different from your competitors? You know, rule number one, know the business. Rule number two, know the audience. Who are they? What do they want from you? Why do they buy from you? You know, who else are they considering? What platforms do they hang about on? What, what social channels do they? Rule number three, and this is arguably the one that most overlaps with the social media side of all of this, give them something they want. There we go. So rather than you trying to sell the product, what does the customer want, which allows you to introduce yourself, to build the brand awareness, to grow the trust and recognition, which now means they know what you do, which now means they might buy from you and meet your objectives from behind. So again, business audience, give them something they want. And there's a really simple strategy that if more businesses did, they'd be doing much better on social media because they'd be giving customer focused content as opposed to social media marketing, which is what far too many people do. No, I mean, that's all, it is a kind of a nice simple way because strategy does, it's like when somebody talks about say digital transformation, it sounds big. Yeah, what does that mean? 
and a strategy that always sounds not for me but it, it is it's, it's looking at what do you need and what do they want and trying to pull it together and is there anywhere else online so you mentioned SOSTAC is there anywhere else online that people could go to find out more information if they are starting to look at their strategy now yeah well, well obviously I would I would give Business Gateway a wee heads up here and say the Business Gateway website the digital boost component part of it there's loads of great content there's a digital boost webinar on digital marketing strategy uh, that again if you haven't attended you definitely should because it might not give you all the answers but it certainly will get you off and running in the right direction and give you the right things to start thinking about um, but yeah there's a wealth of stuff on on Business Gateway's website and and through its uh, webinar program as well that sounds perfect we've just just to clarify we've had a little question come in so Gary when you said Facebook used to give you all the reach and now it gives you none just to clarify, what did you mean by that? Sure, apologies if I didn't make that clear. Um, back in face, back in 2012, 2011, 2012, Facebook wasn't really powered by an algorithm, which basically meant if you went to the bother of growing your um, Facebook business page likes to 500, okay, I've got 500 likes, which means that the next thing you said on Facebook would typically be shown to 500 people, and that that's how it worked. It was free marketing. It was free free promotion. You had the focus. The focus was growing numbers, okay? Because uh, the more numbers you got, the more people saw your content. Nowadays, Facebook's radically changed, and it's not just Facebook. They're all they're all going down a more aggressive um, algorithm approach. So now, if you have, for example, 500 likes on your Facebook business page, the reality is you'll be doing well to achieve a reach of 40 or 50. Um, and that, that's actually quite a good result. The average business on Facebook, according to the latest statistics, sees less than 5% organic reach. So I might have a thousand followers and, and, I'm, and, and I'm doing well if only 50 people see my next post. But that's frustrating for businesses, especially when you don't realise that that's happening. Once you realise it's happening, you then start to combat against it. You start to think about doing better with the algorithm, doing more engaging, tapping in, as Jack said earlier on, into paid strategies, because it kind of does become a bit paid to play at times. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks for clarifying. OK, so the last thing we were going to talk about was SADS. So we've already mentioned that we have we have something to chat about. But um, what, because obviously with social media, like we say, it changes a lot. So there's always talk about trends. What are the trends for this year? What are the trends for next year? What are the kids doing? things do sometimes feel a little bit faddy so kind of which yeah. recent social media trends are fads and which ones are do we think are actually changing the state of play versus so something that's going to be here to stay versus something that won't be here in a few months yep. um so i i'm not going to probably dwell too much on the fads because ultimately we don't know um you know that would just be a, a general hunch um but what i would kind of encourage everyone to think about is generally the the sort of the almost the shift in what type of content um customers and social media users in general are reacting to um, and this is kind of being brought around by a sequence of factors that are fairly unique and and probably um things that we've all gone through over the past obviously two or three years so if you think back to kind of um 2019-18 um, social media in particular because of the way that Instagram acts as a platform and how that started you know it was becoming very curated extremely high quality content not oh, a hair out of place on an image um, you know food photography that looked like every restaurant in Michelin star mm -hmm. restaurant um, and you know overnight essentially obviously I don't want to kind of um, re-bring re up all of the COVID thing because everyone's been through that but you know if you think about um during that COVID period if you were watching BBC Breakfast for example um that went from cinema you know professional TV cameras to literally every interview was just a Zoom interview and essentially everyone's life went from watching high spec amazing content overnight to um everything that you kind of saw was either somehow on Zoom or was you know a similar kind of situation where things were being recorded by real people in their own home with you know it wasn't always ideal um, and at the same time TikTok was kind of coming up uh, and as people had more time at home and people were spending a lot more time on TikTok and that's all kind of built together um, into what I um, probably to the frustration of everyone that works in our team um, I've started to call a more authentic content essentially um, and uh, and because of everything that's happened over the past three years and all these different factors, people see through 
overly curated content a lot more now. Um, and what um, the majority of social media um, kind of users and, and customers and consumers out there are looking for is a lot more of a an authentic take. Um, so if you own a restaurant, if you own a hotel, and you start posting some of that more user-generated content, maybe that people have tagged you in or that kind of thing, you'll see that that kind of content starting to perform a little bit better um, than even the kind of the professional photography that you spent hundreds of pounds to get done. Um, and, and I think if there was one trend I would really think about is, is, is that. Um, think about um, trying to bring a bit more of an authentic edge to your content show show a bit more of your story as the business owner and show a bit more of your customers journeys their story and um, not everything has to be as polished in 2022 um, and again i don't know that might swing back if tiktok content for example starts becoming a bit more high-end and that type of content starts doing well then that might infiltrate all other platforms again but um what we are seeing right now and our kind of guiding principle for this year i guess is that authentic content um, and everyone on our team is fed up to be talking about it but um that kind of user generated style of content and by user generated i mean customers coming in taking pictures that kind of thing um that that's performing extremely well in all of the different platforms at this point in time great advice jack 100 percent agree um authenticity goes a long long way more more than it I arguably ever, as, ever has on, on the world of the digital. You know, I, I hate I hate mentioning a particular ex-president who used to talk about fake news, okay? But, but I wouldn't even name him. Um, let's not get political here. Um, I never subscribed to it being all fake news, but I think we all agree it's all glossy. It's all exaggerated. It's all, again, to, to sound like a broken record, it's all marketing. And, and you know, and, and consumers of today's society are sick fed up of glossy marketing. Um, and that's not just my my personal view. There's a quite a highbrow, top level, heavy uh, report done every year called the Edelman Barometer. You can look it up. It's a bit, it's not for everyone, but it's quite geeky and a fun read, which talks about the, the um, the human trust in things, in, in business, in politics, in 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 the, in the world of the public sector, private sector. And let's just say that over the last few years, every year that the Edelman Barometer comes out, the trust levels go lower. They, they, and it's, we're, we're fed up of lies, we're fed up of marketing, we're fed up of gloss, we're fed up of hype. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's a sign of the times that we're living in, and it's not exactly a, you know, quite, quite, quite a depressing one, quite frankly, but as businesses, if whatever we can do to to be more authentic, to be more honest and open, to to share some of the you know the the, the bad. No, I don't mean the, the you know very few businesses go on to Facebook and and give a true representation of the state of affairs that day. You know uh, we we lie, we gloss it up, we we, we paint a rosy picture. Uh, and I think if you're looking for a quick example of this technically, I think one of the reasons why things like Instagram Stories and Instagram Reels have rocketed lately. It's because of that trend to let our hair down using them a little bit, you know, it's just fun. It's just behind the scenes. It's just a quick, you know, 20 second video of some nonsense that we did in the office that day, as opposed to the Instagram curated feed, which mm -hmm. is filtered and a little bit glossier. And that's one of the reasons why people latched on to stories and to reels is because it's it's more believable. It's more social content. It's not you selling all the time um, and, it, and it's a little bit more authentic. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, again, just to, to Sarah, because you asked for a you know specific fads and again i'm a bit like jack i think if we knew what the fads were or what the things of the future were oh, none of us would be sitting here we'd all be kind of put, putting shares prices and, and, and buying up all the all the, uh, the the predictions um but i think i think video is is still continues to be one of the dominant forms of content uh, it has been for numerous years and i think it will continue to be going forward especially when you start looking at platforms like tiktok and instagram and reels and so on they are predominantly video driven content now long gone are the days and it wasn't that long ago i remember them well I remember people oh don't make vertical video how cheap how, how nasty well vertical video you know that fills the vertical mobile phone is now kind of arguably the dominant video format on these emerging growing growing platforms so video content is huge you know if you're a business and you're not you've not got a video strategy you're not trying to think about doing more video content then you should try and you know shake that up a little bit bring in more video um and i also think as much as we said that you know clubhouse was maybe a wee bit over egged and hyped it is interesting to see lately that the clubhouse you know fad well 
Twitter pinched it, you know, Twitter's moving into audio spaces. Facebook are doing some stuff with audio. The rise of podcasts full stop has been phenomenal over the last few years. So for me, the two main things are from a from a content perspective to look out for going forward that all small businesses need to become better at is video creation and audio creation in some shape or form. That multi, you know, social media is no longer just text or text and images. It's become truly engaging multimedia content. And I think if we put our put our kind of eggs in those baskets for, for the first foreseeable you shouldn't go too far wrong no i think i i mean that is genuinely really interesting I, I, particularly looking at the one the kind of the authentic, authenticity take like it, it is all of the same isn't it like tiktok is a lot more authentic like i know that um i've read a few kind of articles for people who are normally on facebook and instagram and they get those kind of comments the comments that they would get on um tiktok are different it's that more authentic and i know from we've studied um looking at younger generations that was when authenticity started coming in more and it's just interesting that the pandemic has really accelerated that and now made that that mainstream in terms of tiktok because we get asked quite a lot like i think sometimes social media can feel a little bit like you should be doing something so you have to be on tiktok now because that's new and if you're not you're going to get left behind um, and then there's the whole thing, well, can brands be on that? Is TikTok something that small businesses should be thinking about just now? Or is it not the time yet? Or is it another one of those, if it fits you and it fits your audience, then have a look? Yeah, yeah. so the, so the TikTok thing is, is obviously like something that people ask um, us about literally all the time. And um, we have teams of young people um, that are spent on TikTok. The first things I would say about TikTok, um, the first is going to be about the opportunity and then the second thing is going to be really about the kind of realities of it. Um, so firstly, the opportunity for TikTok and the kind of case for it that's always made is that, um, you know, the reach and the views you can get on there are substantial, um, which is absolutely true. Um, I know personally from my own experience with my own content that's been out there um, and our business's content, um, it, there's nowhere else you can kind of get those number of views. Um, for example, I put out a very silly video um, about the new BBC app logos and um, redesigns, um, and that receives over 150,000 views in 24 hours. Um, so there's no other way for me to really amass 150,000 views um, without paying a lot of money on any other platform. Um, unless I already had built a massive audience. So from that point of view, the, op the opportunity to use TikTok as a kind of top of funnel brand awareness kind of um, platform is significant. However, the kind of caveat to all of that is that TikTok is the most unique of all the different platforms as well. And it's almost like a language in amongst itself. Um, I would kind of raise it to something similar that, you know, if you started watching it, if you just tuned in at eight o'clock tonight on BBC One or Two um, and watched EastEnders and you've never watched an episode before, you didn't know the concept of the show um, and you didn't know a single character, um, you'd be pretty lost. Um, and I think if you just went on TikTok right now and started swiping with a brand new account, you would also be pretty lost. Um, TikTok is essentially a series of running jokes across a number of different um, niches and, and kind of demographics. Um, so getting inside that and actually spending time on it is the key thing um, and if, if your business doesn't have i always kind of phrase it as your your you know your, your tiktok nominated individual star. um yeah your tiktok star then the likelihood that yeah. uh, you will kind of keep up with that it, it is pretty limited at the same time tiktok again back to that kind of authenticity point of view um it, it, the videos are such that the brand isn't recognized first it's actually the face or the the voice is recognized first so if your business isn't able to kind of have that consistent face and when i say face i literally mean person and um, that becomes the face of your brand then again it's going to be very difficult to just import what you would maybe put on a kind of um on a normal facebook video or instagram video um and have that successful because it needs to kind of relate to those other inside jokes and those other kind of trends that go on on TikTok and move very quickly. Um, yeah. So the opportunity is huge, but there's a lot of things you need to consider before just jumping on there. Good advice. I'll, I'll keep my response brief because I'm aware of the time and also because Jack just said it perfectly. Uh, I think TikTok is, is more than any of them a people first platform. 
uh, you only need to go and look at you know even larger brands go and look at Marks and Spencer on TikTok for example they're there as a brand okay they're there as Marks and Spencers they don't get very much from it what they then do is they give all their regional stores their own TikToks and they let the people market Marks and Spencers and it's that people-led approach where they're being daft and silly and doing dances in the aisles and doing funny things and and, and so pe a people-led approach is so again to contradict what I said earlier on when people say to me well I don't want to be on Facebook but I'm going to do it as my business only that's not going to work on TikTok in any shape or form it's, it's people driven uh, and the second thing I would say that you know don't don't stereotype things too much okay uh, people's business business owners you know TikTok's just for the kids. Well, go and look at the stats, go and see what the trends show nowadays, go and look at the average age of a TikTok user now compared to three, four years ago. Um, and so don't immediately assume a platform is something just based on your assumptions. Go and get the facts about it and maybe you know challenge yourself on are, are you maybe suitable for this platform depending on who's there, what you're trying to achieve. Um, and one very kind of practical takeaway even if you think, you know what, it's not for me right now. I can't play that game. I can't, I can't, you know, it's, I, I can't do the silly dances and, you know, sing, you know, all the silly lip syncing songs. And of course, TikTok's way more than that, by the way. I am kind of stereotyping it significantly when I say that. Well, it might not be suitable now, but what about the future? So go and bag your username. Go, go and get your username. Go and get your, you know, your at NS design on whatever it is you're, because you might, be taking be tentative baby steps right now but later on it might become crucial to your whole strategy there's that word again just for jack um and 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 so you know don't rule them out safeguard your brand in certain spaces uh, and and as i said earlier on this strategy will evolve so who knows what the future looks like that's brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. That's excellent advice, and I'm sure everyone will take a lot of that. We did get some questions through um, that are quite specific. We've not had a chance to go through all of them, but we will try and um, kind of pull these together and, and pop responses around if we can afterwards. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys. That was really interesting. I think it's just... Yeah. Good chat. Yeah, thank you very much.